Hello, this is Mr. John from Making Drag Fish 3D, and today we're doing some science. I am here with all of my sidekicks, and we're going to talk about barometric pressure. Any clue what I'm talking about when I say barometric pressure? No. All right, well, let's get to it. Barometric pressure is we have the air. The air exerts air pressure. You know what air pressure is, correct? Mm -hmm. So the same kind of pressure that's in a tire that forces the tire to inflate, right? The air pressure in a tire, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, air exerts pressure everywhere to include on your lungs right now, to include on a lake or a body of water. Okay. That's called barometric pressure. Barometric pressure has a baseline at sea level. For the sake of our conversation, we're not gonna get super fine detail. For the sake of our conversation, we're gonna say at sea level, it's 30. We'll say approximates. We're gonna say approximate 30. When molecules get excited, what do they do? What do they tend to do? I got a group of air molecules right there. What do you think's gonna happen when they get excited? They're gonna expand? fall. Yes, they expand, right? Oh. What's a what's a good sign of, of air molecules expanding? Something you can physically feel. An increase in temperature. Because apply heat. Heat will make it expand. What do you think would happen if they contracted? It will get colder. Correct. It gets very much colder. Like in Alaska. Exactly. Like in Alaska. The same is true here with the air, the sky, above the water. This has its own pressure pushing upward, which we'll learn in a different day. So continuing on. So we have a fish. Okay, so what controls the up-down of a fish? Down. It's fins? No. It's keels. No. It's, it's fins It's fins help it pitch roll y'all. Left, right, rolling, etc. Maybe a little bit of angle. The but parts in the ocean? Uh... Nothing? Fish have what is called an air bladder. So what's inside an air bladder? Air. Bingo. And what's over here in the sky? So it's gonna have the same same effect, right? There's gonna be pressure pushing outward from in the bladder, like a. Give me an example of air air in an object pushing outward. A balloon. A balloon. With that said, the water is also exerting pressure onto the fish. No, that's standard. That's standard thing. In order for the fish to rise and fall. Like when we hold a balloon, like when we hold the ball under the water at the pool, right? Mm -hmm. What's the ball want to do? Right? Because the ball has a constant air pressure. The air doesn't change. So, so the pressure of the water is the variable forcing the ball to go up. Okay, what do you think happens to the fish though? The fish just has to let out some air to go to go up. The fish can control the amount of air in its air bladder to go up or down respectively. A fish is fat and happy at 30. It's a nice sunny day and the fish is nice and happy. What do you think happens if we increase the pressure to say about 40. Which way is the fish gonna go? Up or down? Down. To meet its optimum pressure. Remember, it wants to stay in the heart. Is it gonna go up or down? And draw you a scale. If this is 30, okay? This is 30. This is space, right? And this is the core of the earth. And this is sea level. Okay.
Do you follow my scale? Okay, so if this is 30, but that increases to 40, and the fish needs to maintain its nice little happy, happy, happiness, is it going to increase, blow up its air bladder, to float, to go more toward the surface? Or is it going to shrink its air bladder to go further down into the bottom of the bottom of the lake? Because if this is 40, then this would be zero. And this would be like a thousand plus, right? It wants to be close to 30. It loves 30. It loves 30. So it needs to get as close as 30 as possible. So it's gonna go up. What would make the air pressure change from 30 to 40? The sun. Keep going up. Heat. So on a nice, super hot day, we're gonna have to watch it go from 30 to 40. That means we have an increase in heat. Okay. Now, there's an odd phenomenon that happens though. What if it goes down? You're half right, Sam. Say a storm rolls in. Big storm, okay? First it was sunny, but then it became rainy. Remember, the fish wants to be at 30. What do you think is going to happen to the air pressure? pushing down on the water when a storm rolls in. It's gonna go down. Why? Do you have an idea why? Um, or would you just simply like me to explain it? No? The sun, okay, that's one reason. This goes into this book here. Okay, and I've even found it and marked a page for you. This is a book I found at work called The Cambridge Guide to Weather. So here's a picture of a hurricane. We're gonna kind of zoom in on the camera here, okay? Would you look at that picture? As the clouds form, I've got a pressure here of 30. But the cloud's gonna suck that up. Reducing the air pressure to, I don't know, 20. Now which way is the fish gonna go? down to find that heart and he's going to adjust the air bladder now the more this goes down okay the more the fish goes down but he can only go down so far right i mean there is a ground down here okay so when the fish gets to the bottom what do you think happens to him pretty close or he feels like he's gonna die you know when you had the hiccups yesterday and you just and you felt like crap when you ate, when you drank like four sodas and you wanted to vomit, but you couldn't. That's how a fish feels on the bottom during a storm. Sad fishy, sad fishy. Because his air bladder has to be forced to be nice and tiny and he's no longer happy. So how do we know? How do we know what these exact numbers are? We don't, we have machines. Bingo, we have machines. We have technology. There's a few different apps that can show the barometric pressure. However, there's an, a very old way you can do it before we had technology. With two bottles. Here's our next project. That's the video of us learning barometric pressure. Part two to this video is us actually building a barometer out of those glass jars. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit the like button down below and stay tuned for part two. And as always, thanks for watching.